Hey, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to show you uh, how you can make a set of what I call Poor Man's Iron Masters. These are heavy dumbbells that use the Iron Master handles, uh, but they're combined with standard weight plates that you can get for a lot cheaper. So if you're going to go uh, and add up the price of the Iron Master uh, base set that you get, like the 75 pound set, plus the 120 pound add-on, and then plus the 160 pound add-on on top of that especially, uh, these would end up coming out a lot cheaper. So I'm gonna show you how these work, how you can set this up yourself, and uh, I'll show you the trick that makes them work because if you just try to throw the plates together with the handles uh, just straight out of the box, you're gonna run into some issues. Okay, before I show you how these work, uh, I just want to give a little quick background on my history with dumbbells in my home gym and how I've ended up uh, coming to this solution in the end. Uh, so when I started, um, my first set of dumbbells I had uh, in my home gym was spin lock dumbbells, you know, just like this. And spin lock dumbbells work, but as you probably know, um, if you're trying to set up for heavy dumbbell presses, uh, you know, normally you'd want to rest them on your legs before you roll back onto the bench. And, of course, this stabs you in the leg and you're not going to have a fun time. So, the solution I had for that was to use these, which are power hooks. Uh, these clip onto the dumbbell handle like this. And there's actually these uh, neoprene uh, holders here. They go... Yeah, the neoprene clips on here like this, and then the whole thing wraps around the dumbbell handle the other direction. Okay, and there's Velcro. So it goes like that. And what you have to do to use these is you have to set up a bar uh, across your power rack, and then you hang these on the bar with your dumbbells. And then you get set up, you can get, it's nice because you can get tight, you can get your shoulders uh, retracted, your scapula packed in and everything. Uh, you can get an arch if you want. Uh, and then you unrack these and you bench and then you hook them back on top of the barbell uh, when you want to re-rack. Power hooks work. Right? but there's some problems. The biggest problem at this point is that I don't think they still make them anymore. If you go to their website, uh, their website looks like it was uh, built in 1998 on GeoCities or something like that. Um, and it's, just, it's really terrible and it says right at the top of the website, uh, sold out. So you're out of luck if you're trying to get power hooks brand new. Maybe you can find them used somewhere, uh, but you know, good luck. The other thing is, I don't really like the way they feel in my hand. Especially the, the neoprene is kind of squishy, and it just doesn't feel as good as a nice solid uh, knurled steel dumbbell handle, you know? And especially if you like throw some chalk on, you get a really nice solid grip on that dumbbell handle. And with the power hooks, it always felt just a little squishy. The other thing is, uh, this metal right here would really like dig into my the joint of my thumb. And it was kind of painful. It, it wasn't like exc excruciating, uh, but I didn't like it. Another drawback with the power hooks is that you have to set up the bar every time. So you gotta get the bar on the rack, which, you know, I can never remember like how high did I set it. I have to like lay down on the bench and kind of like judge with my arms where do I need to put it. Um, you have to move the bench to just the right position if you're doing like any kind of incline thing you gotta line it up right so there's enough space so the setup with the power hooks is just kind of a big pain in the ass and i didn't i was getting sick of dealing with it 
I briefly switched from the spin locks to uh, these dumbbell handles, which this is just a SDH uh, handle like you'd use to build a pro style dumbbell. Uh, but it works fine for adjustable dumbbells, but you need a good collar so the plates don't fall off onto your face. So I got these Ivanko compression collars, all right? These are quite strong. I loaded these up with plates and like stood on the plates and they didn't move. Um, but the problem with these is that the plates are still, no matter how much you tighten them down, the plates will still spin. Um, kind of like they do on a barbell, but when I'm, I don't know, when I'm doing dumbbell work, I don't want the plates moving around. I don't like the way that feels. Um, so I almost prefer the spin locks over these, and I only use these a couple times. Okay, so with the power hooks, uh, I got sick of those, and I started to, I kind of came to the conclusion that, you know what, the power hooks are fine if you're trying to go really heavy. You don't want to waste effort setting up your, your dumbbell bench or whatever. But really for me, uh, dumbbell bench is just, it's just an accessory. Uh, it's just for extra hypertrophy to get more volume in. Uh, I'm not training for a one rep max in dumbbell bench, so I don't need to have like the most tight arched setup uh, imaginable. And if I waste a little bit of energy getting the dumbbells set up, it's not the end of the world. Uh, and I just kind of came to the conclusion that if the weight is too heavy for me to get set up, uh, like like you would with regular dumbbells, putting them on your knees and rolling back, then I should probably just use a lighter weight and go for higher reps. So for me at this point, uh, I'm only programming dumbbell bench in like the the eight rep range at the heaviest and usually like eight, eight to 10 to maybe 12 reps. Uh, maybe drop down to like six reps occasionally, but really nothing, uh, nothing heavier than that. Okay, so I decided I was tired of using the power hooks, uh, but I was still left with the problem of stabbing myself in the legs, right? So I needed to, come up with a better solution. And I actually have uh, dumbbells that go up to 100 pounds, right? So everything up to that is fine. But I was still using the spin locks uh, for everything over 100 pounds. Of course, the awesome thing about the Iron Masters is that they have the flat uh, end uh, cap on the screw here, so you can rest them on your legs, no problem. They're not gonna cut you or dig into your thighs. Um, but I already had all these standard plates, right? I, I had everything I needed to make dumbbells from like 100 pounds up to, you know, whatever, 150 pounds if I wanted to. I had all the plates I needed, so I really didn't want to spend the money on the Iron Masters, especially considering how expensive they are. Okay, so I actually didn't come up with this idea on my own. Uh, I saw somebody years ago on the bodybuilding.com forum that actually tried this out, but it was just somebody who owned a set of Iron Masters and they also had a bunch of standard weight plates and they were curious, like, will this work or not? And they put them on there, they took a couple photos, said, yeah, it looks like it works, but I'm not gonna use it like that. Um, and that was pretty much the extent of it. So anyway, I went on Iron Master's website and it turns out they do actually sell the handles by themselves uh, without the full set with the weights and everything. Um, so I wasn't 100% sure if it would work. Um, I just going off this old forum post but I gave it a shot, I ordered a set of handles and put them together and I found out that it almost works. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so if you look at these, you can see these are the Iron Master handles, exactly what they sell on their website. And then I have two 25 pound plates on both sides here. So this dumbbell right here, the way I have it set up is 110 pounds because the handles with the screws are 10 pounds uh, themselves. Okay, so right now it's tightened down. You can see uh, it's on there and all I have to do is turn the screw, get it to the right spot where it comes out and there you go. And you can take the plates off and there's the handle right there, okay? And you can do the same with the other side. But here's the trick. This right here is the secret weapon to making this whole system work together. This is a one inch washer, okay? 
just a thin piece of metal fits right over the screw like this okay and it acts as a little spacer this is crucial because without this washer you're not going to be able to make the iron master handles work with standard plates but with the washer it works great okay so i think i'm gonna have you guys come closer so i can show you exactly what's going on here okay so now i'm going to show you up close uh kind of how this all works together all right so if we take the plates off here this is what the iron master handle looks like and by the way you can see it has this really nice uh 30 millimeter i think maybe 32 millimeter nicely knurled grip which i really like for pressing movements uh, much better than the thin spin lock handles which is one of the reasons i wanted to get this all right notice this notch right here notice this notch right here on the screw notice how there's only threading on a small portion of the shaft of this screw okay the only way this goes in is if the two notches are lined up. So you put, you put all the plates on, you slide this in, and then you turn it. Once you start turning it, it gets out of this groove. See, there's a groove in there. That's where the threading fits when you're, when you're sliding it together. Then as you turn it, as you turn it, it goes into the groove, right? And it tightens down against the plate and everything's good, okay? So it goes in, turn it, tighten down, turn it back, you pull, pull it right out. That's why you can change these so quickly. Okay, so the problem is uh, the plates that you get when you buy this from Iron Master, you know, they're all the same exact width they all fit together, uh, and I'm sure they, you know, did some calculations to make sure that no matter how many plates you had on there, you would still be able to insert the screw, turn it, and it would bite, and it would have enough, it would turn far enough, it would turn far enough away from this notch, see, when they're lined up, it comes out, so you have to turn it. They say between uh, 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock, okay? So you don't want to be between 11 and 1 up here. Anything else, you can consider tightened down and secure, all right? So sometimes, with Iron Master, sometimes this notch is going to be here. Sometimes it's going to be down here. Sometimes it's going to be over here. It's all good. It's, it's tight. It's not going to fall out. The problem is, if the notch is up here... It's not, it's not biting on anything, okay? It'll just fall right out and the plates will fall on your face and kill you and you'll die. All right, so if we take the plates, take the standard plates, set them up on here, okay? And you have to get the hole lined up, which is one reason I like the 25 pounders because if I had a big stack of 10 pound plates, then I have to get, you know, all of those uh, one inch holes lined up to try to get the screw through. It's easier when it's just two 25s. And now I kind of feel here, like I can feel the notch over here on this side. So I'm going to line up the screw with the notch, it goes in. You got to find where it's going to bite on the threads and turn it. Notice how I started up here, the notch went all the way around, not all the way, but it went all the way to over on this side. The notch is here, this notch is here. So I can't see them both at the same time. I got to kind of feel for it and see where the notch is. But regardless, this is tightened down safely. It's not going to come off. It's on there. Okay. It's like, it's good. It's secure. So far, so good. Now, do the same with these plates. Okay, where's the notch? The notch is right here. Line up the notches. Goes in. And you see that? So if I, if I tighten this, 
it goes all the way around to the other side and it does start to get snug but if I keep turning it it comes loose again so the problem is these plates are not all a perfect uniform thickness and they're not they're not calibrated or calculated to to work with these handles that's where our friend the washer comes in all you need is this one inch washer which are really cheap you can get them from you know wherever I think I ordered these on Amazon like a whole bag of them uh, slide the washer over the screw now there's just enough space here that the screw will tighten down and bite so again the notch is over here on the handle and this notch is right here so now it's super tight just like the other side and if you notice there's just there's just a small gap here, not enough to matter at all, just the, the width of that washer. And everything's good. Nice and tight. No problems. Okay, so you're probably wondering, this dumbbell now is 110 pounds, how high can we go? All right, so if I loosen this up, let's take a look. Uh, again, let's see, where's the notch? Found the notch over here this out all right so obviously we can do uh, this is gonna be one uh, so we had 110 this would be adding two and a half on each side so that would put us up to 115 right so 115 120 125 all right let's see will this tighten down with 125 and I'm gonna take this off because you never know if you're gonna need this until you try to tighten it down, okay? So it just depends on what plates you have on here. So if I put this in, will this tighten down? It tightens down. Here's what, here's what I'm curious about. How much thread do we actually have locking here? Okay, so you can see, see what's going on here? I have it tightened down, but how much thread is there? There's like barely just the last two threads that are catching. I don't know about you, but I would not trust this. Uh, I wouldn't trust this over my head if I was trying to do dumbbell bench with it, okay? So that's why I ordered these, okay? These are the longer uh, uh, extension screws for the uh, expansion kits. And you can order these separately as well. Um, it does get tricky though, because if you try to use these and you don't have enough plates on, they're going to hit each other and then it won't get tight, okay? So you have to have enough plates on each side for it to actually have room to use these screws. But with these, you can go, you know, you can fit much more on here. Okay, so with the longer extension screw, we can really load this up. We can put uh, 110 plus 20, so this would be 130. We can do five pound jumps. We can do uh, 135. 140, 150, all right, and even even here when we do 150, all right, even at 150, you can see there's still um, about an inch and a half actually more like two inches of threads that are connecting. So you, you, you're totally good there still. All right, you could even go, you can even go higher than that.
Okay, so it does occasionally, uh, they do occasionally get tightened down uh, very tight and they're a little bit hard to get off. Um, but obviously that's better than being too loose, right? Okay, so if you put a five here, feel for that notch, it's right up here. Tighten this down. Okay, see this one? It's not gonna work, we need the washer. Put the washer on. Now it tightens down, notches here, notches here. It's well within that uh, one o'clock to 11 o'clock window of safety, all right? So look at this. See that? Okay, we can do that on the other side. It's funny because I have the same plates on both sides, but there must just be slight differences either in the threading of the screws or the width of the plates because on the other side I needed the washer and on this side I don't. The notch is up here and this notch is back here. Anyway, check it out. Look at that, 160 pound dumbbell, uh, just one because I'm too lazy to make two of them. Um, I've actually never had this loaded up this heavy before because I'm not strong enough to do anything with it. Except maybe some uh, super cheater style uh, dumbbell rows. I don't know, let's give a shot. Okay, so those are some nice uh, one-arm deadlift cleans. <laughs> so this did, this came, this loosened up slightly on me there, a little bit, but not bad. And you know, that's not gonna happen when you're pressing. That's just because I was banging into the floor uh, with 160 pounds on it. Um, but this side is still really tight. Okay, so one thing to note here is that even though I have 160 pounds on here right now, uh, and you could look at it and say, well, you're pretty close to maxing out the, uh, the pin, right? You know, you're going to start losing threads. You could probably add another, another uh, two and a half pound plate to get up to 165, and then you'd be down to about an inch of threads here, which is kind of cutting it close for me. Um, the thing to remember is you can always add more 25s. You could put three 25s on each side, uh, plus the 10 pound handles, that would give you a base weight there of 160 pounds. And then you could still add like another, you know, 40 pounds to that. You could go up to 200 pounds on these if you wanted to. You can actually go heavier than you can on the, the standard Iron Master um, dumbbell sets that they sell. Okay, so at this point you might be wondering, is this really practical? Uh, how much money will I actually save? You know, if it's if you're just gonna save 50 bucks or something like that, then yeah, it's definitely not worth it. Um, but you can save a large amount of money uh, by doing this. And how much you save is gonna depend on your own circumstances, um, what you're upgrading from, which I'll get into in a second, and mainly though, how much you spend on the plates themselves. Okay, so right here I have a piece of paper with a lot of chicken scratch on it that is the prices for all the different things that you'd have to get from Iron Master uh, if you wanted to either get their uh, full 165 pound dumbbell set or what you'd need to buy in order to make a set like this. And because I don't have a stand for these, to, so I'm comparing apples to apples here, uh, I'm going to assume that if you bought the 165 pound kit from Iron Master that you don't actually get the, the kit that comes with a stand. Okay, so from Iron Master, you would have to get the 45 pound dumbbells, which are 399, the 75 pound upgrade, which is 169, the 120 pound upgrade, which is uh, 299, and the 165 pound upgrade, which is $309. So altogether, 
that adds up to $1,176. And Iron Master does have free shipping on everything, which is nice. Um, but yeah, hundred or uh, eleven hundred seventy-six dollars if you go with the standard Iron Master uh, setup. Okay, so now let's look at how much this costs. If you buy the handles from Iron Master, they are two hundred fifteen dollars. And then if you want to be able to go up to one sixty-five or even higher, like we saw, we saw in this video, uh, you have to get the extra long screws. So those are $32 each. You need four of them, so that's $128. So 215 plus 128 is $343. Okay, so that's a big difference, $833. But of course, you to be fair, you also have to factor in however much you pay for the plates, right? If you're buying the plates new, and let's say you can find them you know, it, it's hard to find the actual cost of these type of plates uh, because if you go on Amazon, there's like a different price for every size that you want to buy. So to simplify things, I just said, you know, let's assume that on average you can get the plates for $1.50 a pound. In order to make a pair of 165 dumbbells, uh, you actually need 310 pounds of standard plates. Okay, so assuming that you can get them at an average of $1.50 a pound, you end up saving $368 by going this way versus uh, just buying the standard sets from Iron Master. Now, let's say you find a better price, you can get them for $1 a pound. In that case, you save $523. Where it gets interesting now is if you buy the plates used. Uh, so like, you know, kind of a standard starting point for used plates like this is about 50 cents a pound. Um, so if you can get these for 50 cents a pound, then you're coming in at $678 less than the Iron Masters. If you're patient, sometimes you can get really good deals on used plates. I've actually bought hundreds of pounds of pancake plates for 20 cents a pound. I got lucky and I found this old guy who was just selling off a ton of weight equipment and I bought up all these plates and I actually built my pro style dumbbells that way. Um, but so if you can find a deal like that, then you're talking, then you're really saving a lot of money. But super awesome deals aside, even if you go, even if you get these for 50 cents a pound used, uh, you're still saving almost $700. And of course the person that this is going to make the most amount of sense for is going to be someone like me that already has all of the plates and you already have uh, you know, a set of dumbbells that you're using that are just with like spin lock handles. And if that's what you're doing and you already have all the plates, at that point, compared to buying a brand new set of Iron Masters, you're saving like $800. It's a really good deal if you look at it from that perspective. You already have the plates and you're just upgrading the handles. It makes a lot of sense to do that if that's the situation that you're in. And I'm not gonna say that these are just as good as having the actual Iron Masters, because uh, they aren't as fast to change the plates the plates don't lock together the same way uh, that the Iron Masters do, so you have to take a little time to line up the holes. Uh, and of course you have to use the washer as a spacer, um, so that adds a little uh, extra finagling to, to get the everything to work right. Um, but overall, they work really well, uh, and you save a lot of money, so uh, for a lot of people I think it'll be worth it. You know, if you have the money to spend and you want to get the Iron Masters and you know they're going to be awesome and work great, then go ahead and do it. Um, you know, maybe someday I'll upgrade to those. But for now, these are doing the job just fine and uh, I'm pretty happy with them. All right, I hope this video was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, if there's anything that wasn't clear, just leave a comment below and I'll try to answer that for you. Um, and yeah, if, if anybody else is trying this out, uh, let me know how it works for you. Okay, just to show you, uh, what we have here is a never-before-seen 200-pound Iron Master dumbbell, uh, which 200-pound Iron Master dumbbell would probably be a good clickbait title for this video. Um, but just to prove that it can be done, I have three 25s on each end. I have two 10s beyond that, so it's 
150 plus 10 for the handle is 160 plus 40 more pounds is 200 pounds and what could you do with a dumbbell like this I don't know I personally probably can't do much with it uh, maybe a one arm deadlift let's see That's a grip challenge. <laughs> Woo! That's heavy. There you go. 200 pound Iron Master dumbbell. Uh, save yourself some money. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video.